of great importance is looking at the Quran and trying to decipher what Allah says about the shaitan and how the shaitan works. Because I tell you, each and every one of us needs to know exactly the methods of the shaitan and the operations of the shaitan and the maneuvering of the shaitan. No doubt, this is of great importance. How are we expected to encounter the influence of this particular creation of God if you are not equipped with the necessary tools and the knowledge given to us in the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran says, when it comes to the shaitan, don't think that he is strong. No. The shaitan's impact is weak. Allah says definitely, very surely, shaitan is weak. It's the human being that develops that what? that relationship and enables the devil to have the influence upon them. Yes, number one. Number two, the Quran says the shaitan promises falsely, gives false advice. Quran says the constant promising of the shaitan is full of deception. Yes full of conceit. Similarly, the Quran, what does it say? It says one of the tools of shaitan is that it places, he places fear in the hearts of the human being. Shaitan promises you poverty. Yes, one of the tools of shaitan is that he wants to make you fear the future when it comes to deeds, when it comes to actions, specifically regarding wealth and spending of money is concerned. It's of the most important elements that the Quran speaks about with regards to the operation of the devil is that he has a tailor-made plan for every human being. Please pay attention to this. Allah wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. La tattabi'u khutuwaat al-shaytan. Oh, you who believe, don't follow the footsteps or the plan of shaytan. وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعْ خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Whomsoever does so will be what? Ordaining and commanding falsehood and evil. So it is not only that they will be following shaitan, they will be agents of the devil. They will be agents of this evil creation of God, this Satan, yes? Very importantly, this plan has two sides. There is a general plan and there is a private plan. Understand this and many things will become clearer. What do we mean? The shaitan wants to take you and I on a journey. This journey, the ultimate destination is kufr and the rejection of God and polytheism. But this journey has a number of levels of association with Iblis himself. What do we mean? The Quran gives us this particular objective of the shaitan. That's the beauty of the words of Allah, the mesmerizing words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah says, I haven't left you alone. I haven't abandoned you. Shaitan is weak. Sometimes we and I are weak. We succumb to the temptations of shaitan. But Allah says, I've given you the tools to defeat him. Understand it and you'll be successful. How does the shaitan get us closer to him? There are seven or eight degrees of association and level of membership with the shaitan's party. Yes. The first level of the association with shaitan is known as wiswas. Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas. This is what whispering, yes? In Arabic, wiswas means what? It means something that's done in private, very quietly, without necessarily anybody hearing it or anybody knowing that it's been uttered or mentioned. The shaitan begins this. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. says that the shaitan flows through the human being the same way as blood goes through their veins and the arteries. Yes, you don't feel it. Do you feel the circulation in our bodies? No, the shaitan can penetrate. Yes, 
That's the first level, yes, that is known as wiswas. The second degree of the association with shaitan, according to the Quran, is hamza or hamaza. What is that? The Quran says when it comes to the shaitan, he, after the wiswas, can penetrate a little bit deeper into our souls. Yes. And what has a bigger influence after that acceptance of the human being and the lack of the rejection of the whisperings, there is what is known as nazgha. Yes. The previous verse is This is all from the Quran, yes? What is this ghamza? Yes. This means what? Means now the shaitan has been able to penetrate to a degree that what? That the heart is encapsulated with satanic thoughts, with satanic desires and directions. After which the relationship goes on to the fourth level. And that is brotherhood or sisterhood, so to speak. The Quran says, Inna al-mubaddireena kanu ikhwana shayateen. Those who are spending their wealth in the wrong manner, that is what tabdeer is. Because some people ask, what is the difference in Quran between tabdeer and israf? You know, there are two terms. Those who know Arabic, we use them sometimes synonymously. Yes? Whereas ulama, some of them have suggested, tabdeer means when you use something in the disobedience of God, Wealth, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, anything that Allah has given you, you utilize it for the wrong reasons. That's tabdeer. Israf is when you and I go excessively out of boundaries, yes? And what? And waste what has been given to us, yes? We are overindulgent, so to speak. Sometimes I'm hearing, once one of the scholars said, he, was, he met someone who said to him, Maulana Sayyidna, you know, I have 500 ties, subhanAllah. 500 ties, what are you going to do with the 500 ties? It's, and just to be fair, yes, sometimes some of our sisters have hundreds of pairs of shoes. The idea that exists is sometimes we go way over what is normally acceptable. Yes, that is what? Israf. The Quran says, Inna al So they become the brothers of Satan. Once they become brothers, then they're on the way to become friends. Awliya shaitan yes? Friends normally listen to each other. They advise each other, yes? They give each other pointers. Once, God forbid, an individual has become a friend of the shaitan, the shaitan is able easily to misguide them, yes? The shaitan easily is there, you know? Sometimes when we have a problem, we have a challenge in life, who is the first person that we call? Yes, our friends. Because we know the friends are not necessarily going to judge us. They're going to help us. They're going to side with us. Similarly, when the shaitan reaches that level of association with the human being, when there is that loyalty of friendship, then the first thought that comes to the human being when they are about to do something is satanic. Because shaitan has become... Their close, intimate buddy, their companion. Yes, but uh, this doesn't end there. The shaitan then makes them part of his hizb. Yes, this hizb shaitan is mentioned in the Quran. That means their loyalty is so fierce and strong now that they are one of the party of shaitan. Yes. The party means there is unwavering loyalty. The party means whatever it takes, I will do. What the shaitan commands me to do, yes? And the final and the most emphatic means of their relationship and the connection of this creation of God with the human beings is to worship the devil or to worship shaitan. I tell you, how there, who many, how many people worship him? Quran says many. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alam ahad ilaykum. Ya Bani Adama and La Tahu Shaytan. In Nahu Lakum Adun Mubin. O any Abuduni, Hada Suratun Mustakim. Surah Yasin, we recited many times. Allah says, Did I not tell you and took a 
co a covenant and an oath from you. Don't worship the shaitan. Yes, sir. The human being reaches that level of what? Of being the worshippers of the shaitan. Meaning, they do whatever it takes to please the shaitan. And they are totally in the hands of the evil whisperings and the temptations of shaitan.